And we were having a discussion. If Bezdin is Mitsuba, is Bezdin doesn't have the obligation to prevent someone from doing an Aver or not, Bezdin Mitsuba will have Prishim Isa or not. And um, we also mentioned that the more talk about Bezin, maybe a father is different, the father definitely has to prevent. And we said that the Bezin does not have to intervene at all uh, to prevent them. And we had an the Gemara's discussion, and there's an argument the Gemara with Abdos and others, whether th that only applies to mitzvahs in the Torah, or also mitzvahs the Rabbanon, that we have to stop them as well. And then that we don't have to stop them. That, I'm sorry, the way we don't have to stop them is only mitzvahs the Rabbanon, or even uh, Taylor, we don't have to stop them. Rabdos said, you know, by the, he gave advice, go out in the street, get the kids to play in order to carry a kid. That means even Mitzvah Taylor, you don't have to stop them. And we already explained how that how that flies in the face with the other rule that we have of Mitzvah Chinuch. Maybe it's only on the father. Maybe it's only if the kids are over a certain age. And we were talking about here, kids are under a certain age and, and so on. So we're continuing. We are in the middle of the page. Probably about 20 lines from the bottom of the page, and we're up to Tashma, the first of the line with Trumadura Banu. Says the Gemara, Tashma, come in here, let's try to bring another proof. Yoinik Tinuk, that a child can nurse the Heilich and go on, that a child can nurse from a non Jewish woman or from a behema to Meya, or from a behema which is not kosher. The fact that the Gemara puts the two together, Rabbein learns that to nurse from a from a Goyish woman is actually awesome Hatayra. Others say that Rabbanon, others say it's only Midas Chassidus. But we know that, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu refused to nurse from a non Jewish woman. And because it passes on some of the, as some of the Shayim say, because they, they they eat treif and all that, so therefore it passes on to the to, through the nursing, and therefore it should be aware at all costs. But interesting the way the, 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 in the text over here, it seems that they are very similar. Anyway. You're allowed to give a child to nurse from a behemoth to me. We're not saying, oh, the yen is is, look, the child is eating something which is not kosher. It sounds clearly from here that even on Easter and the Taylor, you don't have to stop. But here clearly we're talking about a very, very young, a little baby. Definitely you're not allowed, but you're not allowed to feed, hand feed to them, even though we say you don't have to stop them from eating, but then we learned also, Rabbi Yechia said before, if the child even doing it on their own, but he's doing it for you, that's considered as if you're giving it to them, you're definitely not allowed to administer them, you're not allowed to give them anything which is not kosher. And we'll soon see the bottom of the page where we learn that from. And all of these cases, he can, he can have unique, even on Shabbos, even on Shabbos, when milking an animal is also involved in Easter of Shabbos because of Mefarek, you are separating. Uvegodl, also, an adult is not allowed to deeply in all instances. Abashol, on Shabbos. Abashol, I mean, I'm a kosher animal, you're not allowed to do on Shabbos, granted, but on Yatav, you can't. Now, before we get to talk about that, but we don't say we don't care if the child is nursing from a non kosher animal. Clearly, you don't have to stop them. Even east of the territory, you don't have to stop. Says you want proof. There's a danger the child has to feed. Then even a godl is not eat not kosher. Godl by umnu. It comes to a godl, you have to assess whether it, is it really a sakana or not. No cotton nami by umnu is a cotton also white white cut blanch. If you're not allowed to feed trade to a cotton, then you, you can't give carb lunch. You have to then also assess whether the child can survive or not. When it comes to a little baby, you can't even wait till Matsuri Shabbos. A little baby is in Kassid Masukin. They have to feed whenever they want to feed. And therefore, you're by baby allowed to automatically. There's no proof from here whatsoever, one way or another. It's the cotton. Okay, while we're there, we're going to you now focus on what Abba Shol said. Abba Shol, I'm in no you know, you know, our custom was, on Yom Tov, we would, if we're, if, you know, we would uh, nurse from a behemoth Tahira. We would uh, suck out the milk from the behemoth Tahira. Hey, Chidame, what are we talking about? Idika Sakana, if a person's life is in danger, and that's why you're, you're not allowed to milk. What's the Easter of milking on Shabbos on Yom Tov? It's called Mefarik. And Mefarik, according to Rashi and Summer Shainim, is a tool of dosh. Dosh is threshing. And, um, you're separating the, you know, the the the, the grains, the husk. You're separating here the, the liquid, the milk from the from the flesh. That's an isa deraisa. Others say nothing to do with that because the Gemara says in Shabbos, in the, in the seventh pedic, ain't disha karka that the isa of threshing is only if it grows from the ground. 
and an animal is not considered gedula karka. Even the Gemara Sukkah, we learned that it does, you know, that the animal feeds from the ground, but it's not uh, considered really gedula karka. It itself does not grow from the ground. And because it is not a gedula karka, an animal, so why is it that, um, that uh, where does Mufar come in here? So uh, some say that there are some Tanaim who hold that Disha does not require gedula karka. And Rashi rule, and this, these Gemara's rule like that Tana, that we don't need gedula karka. Tracer says, actually, over here, Mefarik, even though it is Mefarik, is not um, a tool of dash, but rather a tool of Mechik. Because when you, you drink the milk from the udder, you're flattening out the udder. That's Mechik. You're flattening out, smoothing out. And that's the ease of the rice here. So it's irrelevant whether it's a Gidula Karka or not. Anyway, so the Gemara continues. Every lexicon, there's no danger at all. If you have this then why are you permitted? You know, the Mefarik, you know, the rider, Lloyd Sikha, the Ikit Saira. We're talking about this pain. So not dying, but there's pain. And therefore, when there's pain, there are certain liberties we're allowed to do. Certainly, certain rabbanu. Normally, when you milk an animal, you, you do it by hand, and it goes into a keli, into a vessel. Here, you're going straight to your mouth. So therefore, it's not the normal way. So even there's needs to the Torah generally, but if you do it this way, the abnormal way, it's only with rabbanu. So Shabbos, he says, kila Shabbos. What if you have done the normal way, you get Nisa's kila, goes with rabbanu. Rab, the rabbanu said, don't even do it through shini. Even if you did deliberately and you did the right way, or you, 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 you're over a lav, step lower, like goes rabbanu. But we're not going in such a case as well. The Rishayim want to know why over here we only allow because of Tzara and Yom Tov and the uh, Gemara Ksubas of Samach there we talk about it and there we say that even at Abiranus we say that even on Shabbos you're allowed to. So Tasis wants to make a difference of different kinds of pain. Pain of hunger or pain of sickness. The Gemara is not about pain of sickness and there we allow even for Shabbos. Here we're about pain of hunger and therefore it's only pain of hunger uh, not talking about dying, just talking about uh, discomfort on Yom Tov. We allow Shabbos we don't. Tashma coming here, will they bring that three from Sukkim that you're not allowed to administer anything to your child? Tashma it says in the Pasik on the bottom of the page. It says in the Pasik that the Loisai Chlum do not give them to eat Kishaketaim. So we dash and Loisai Chilum do not give them to eat Lahazak Dinu al Kanim. You're not allowed to give it to your children. My love, the Amalahu Loy Sechlum. So why can we understand? It doesn't mean you're not allowed to give. It means you have to stop them. If you see the meeting, tell them, no, you tell them, don't eat, don't eat. And we're like, no, the least will be dying. What it means is you're not allowed to, even though we say that you don't have to stop them if they eat it themselves on their own accord, but you are not allowed to give it to them. That for sure, you're not allowed to uh, get them used to eating treif. So the big machleg is a shayim, whether this is actually an Easter in the Torah to give treif to a child, or is it only an Easter the Rabbanon and this possibly the smachta? So this is the first one we learn, we learn by not kosher. Then the Gemara said Tashma by the same thing when it comes to blood. Call nefesh because of them don't need blood. So we dash and it has so many occasions that it says an extra possible. So why does it say it again? To tell you. So uh, with the first possible, like Soy Khlum to Shek is we learn out because an extra possible like already says a number of times, don't eat it by Shratzim. So it must be to teach you, don't give somebody else. Same thing by Dam. My lab, Dam Loy Soy, you tell them not to eat. Loy the Loy, at least we dying. Same thing, you're not allowed to feed them. Tashma, the third one is by Tumma. Emma, the Mark of Lahazi, the Amalekanim. He says, and we had in part of the Emma. Emma, the Kanyim, he says, the Mark of the Emma, I said twice, one to them, to adults, to tell them to make sure that they don't give to the kids. Lahazi, the Amalekanim. My lab, the Amalu, who likes a Tamma, the Gyorjay, and tell the kids, the Kanyim, don't become Tamma. I said, no, Loy Tamma, don't drag them along and make them Tamma. Sirichi, so why do we three psukim to tell you that you're not allowed to give something that, which is forbidden to your children? We need each one. We need the posse by Sheretz. We need the posse by Dam. And we need the posse by Tumut. And why is that? The Yashmin the Isur of Mashu. The Isur, there's no minimum. Now, why is there no minimum? But actually says, because the sins, when it comes to Tumut, it's the size of a lentil. So, therefore, when it comes to Isur, it's also the size of a lentil, which would mean, according to Rashi, that this only applies to the eight Sheretzim. There are only eight Sheretzim, then the Pashashmini, that become Tame, that generate Tumut. All the other shratim don't. So that seems to actually an interesting thing that all other shratim you wouldn't be chayiv for a, a mashu. Only these eight shratim you'd be chayiv for a mashu. Tesis disagrees with Rashi altogether. And Tesis says that um, that when it comes to eating, you don't get malchus until the kazayis. What do you mean he more about shratim a mashu? He says it means if you ate a berry, if you ate a, a full aver, this, um, this is a little ant, you ate an ant, the size of a, of a, of a lentil, even smaller, You'd be high because a barrier is so harsh, even though it's less than a kazai, you'd be high. So, 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 so Shaykh can have such a small amount. I will dam when it comes to dam the adi kudavias, it has to be a minimum of a revias before you become tummy. Others say kazai, others say tamaklikis, a malay. Others say that if it be a solid, the kazai, which is the equivalent of a revias, it's liquid. A malay, no. 
So therefore, you would have thought, since it's so lenient, maybe only Shotzim was so mach, because even a mach, blood, which you get cut. By blood, there's a curse. So therefore, you don't administer to your children. Our Shotzim is only a lav, aim alive, and that's a good pedantic. We ask me, you'll give it to your children. We ask me, and how they tie to these two, which will be soon in Shabbat Bakal, it's an Easter, it's applicable to everybody. Avul tumor, it comes to tumor, which is only limited to Kraini, may Maloy. Maybe if it's only limited to Kraini, we're not so stringent. We're not so stringent, and therefore you're allowed to metame your children. We ask me the tumor, if you only do tumor Kraini, I'm shining out to Kraini, but different, we should believe in Mitzvah, and Mitzvah, and Mitzvah, we can't learn things from Kraini regarding other people because with Kraini, we have so many additional humors. So this is just piling on. Another one. Avul Hani, may Maloy, but all these other things, who said you're not allowed to give to your children? Therefore, Tzicha, when you're all three. Okay, Toshma, come back in here. Shnei Achin, going back to our mission. Now, now we remember we have this whole Gemara here about giving, uh, giving an issue and all that. What does it have to do with that whole Gemara here? How do we get to it? Because here's the point. We're going to go to our mission now, and we're going to try to prove one way or another. So says the Gemara, Toshma, come in here. Um, uh, Shura Pada said that even by, uh, Pada said that even by Surim Deraisa, we don't have to stop them. So we're going to learn from our mission and see whether that's correct. Toshma, come in here. It says in the Mishnah. We read three cases. Shleiachi, two brothers. Echad became a chedesh. One was uh, one was intelligent, and one was a chedesh who was popular from mitzvahs. And soon you were married. Shleiachoy, a zeruba, and a shimur. Zeruba was a pikeach, a shimur was a chedesh. They married two sisters. Pikeach, both sisters were pikeachs. Made chedesh by pikeachs. If shimur, let's say, died, so she he was only married with the rabbanon, but now there's a mitzvah yibur the rabbanon. So um, so what happens here? And the two sisters. So what happens? She's free. Shima's wife is free because her sisters were married to Reuben legitimately. Can't be a midst of Yibam. So therefore, that's like an error. So what about the other way around? Mes became Bafakah. Reuben died, who's married Maha Now there's a midst of Yibam Matera. And Shimon is merely married to his wife, Midr Abbanan. Um, because he's a cheresh, he's Maya said Khaj Babakah. What does Shimon do? He's a Khadesh. He cannot give Khalitza. Uh, so, so Mahatayda, um, Reuben's wife is bound to him, and and he's and he's Mahatayda. The Taylor's recognize his marriage to the younger sister, the Pekach, um, because he's only a Chaydish. So, what can he do? He cannot give uh, Chalitza to Reuben's wife because he's a Chaydish. He can only marry, but he's already married to her sister. At least with Ramana. is what happens. He's Moitzi as Ishte beget. He has to divorce his own wife with a uh, get. And now this enables that Reuben's wife should be able to marry him. But if he can't marry Reuben's wife either, it could be the sister of his ex-wife, which is very which you're not allowed to marry. Achay Grusha. The age is Achiv She's forbidden forever. Now the question is, if we don't mind if if someone who is um, a, a child and a chayda shayt to be cut and all in the same league, if we don't mind them doing an avera, so why tell the shimon to divorce his wife? Sit together, even though they're doing an avera, even though Shimon's doing an avera, he's living with a sister of someone that he's bound to mahatera. So what? We don't stop. According to us, we don't stop people from doing isurim the rights if they're not responsible in their own right. So let the Chayda stay married to the sister. Let them continue living together, Shimon, who is the Chayda with the Pikachas, he's, he's, he's like a cotton Eichel of Eilusu. He's eating tray for the said before, we allow him. He, Taki, is a cotton, but she is an intelligent wife, and she's also committing an Abeda. She is staying married to Shimon, who is bound to her sister. So that because of her, we have to let them divorce. Okay, Toshma, the reverse. So right now, the more things that the main thing is her. The main uh, person who's doing an Avera is the wife. So what about the other case? Both brothers were in, <coughs> in control of the faculties. This one, you know, marriage, they had two sisters. So Shimon's wife, the Chedesh, Shimon's only married to Rabbanon. The mess became about Chedesh. If Shimon dies, my ass became about Chedesh. What does Ruben do? Again, Shimon's wife is free. Because her sister's married to Ruben. Mess became about Chedesh. Ruben dies. My ass became about Chedesh. What should Shimon do? He has to first divorce his wife. Might this be get because she's now the sister of one who's bound Mahab Tayda. The age is okay, but what can he do with Ruben's wife? He can't marry Ruben's wife because it's the sister of his ex-wife, but he could give her Khalitza because he's a Bekeh. Now, you told me before the whole problem is the woman. In this case, the woman is a Khadesh, so therefore she's a cotton, so let them stay married. So what if she's doing an Aveda? We don't have to stop them. But my might is if we get taste, you gotta let stay there. So we answer cotton is a part of the question. Cotton is available, so we don't stop them before draft does. So we answer Mishum Sula the day. He also has an Avera. In other words, the Gemara says they both have an Avera. When they, when they they live together in sin, it's not the man who's responsible, it's not the woman. They both equally shoulder the Avera. In that case, therefore, either one's doing an Avera, we have to stop it. So Amar Rav says, oh, so then what about the following case where they're both a Chedesh? 
then we should let them remain married. Tosh Rakamani, Shneyachet, two brothers, Echet Cherukech, Nisun Shneyachet married two sisters, Achas Pikachas Vacha Cheresh, so Meiz Cheresh Vacha Cheresh, Shimon, who was married to the Cheresh, so they're both Cheresh, so they're both only Medir Rabbonum, Mayase, if he died, so obviously Mayase Pikke Baba Kachas, Tate Shemachas, Shimon's wife is free. Because her sister is, is married to Reuben. Fine. What about Meis Pekeh Babakach? Reuben died. My Asachet Bacharesh. What should Shimon do? Moitzis Ishi Begeri has to divorce his wife because she's a sister of one who is bound not to marry Mahatoyda because Yibum is Mahatoyda. It doesn't matter if he guys a Cherish. Moitzis Ishi Beget. The age is Achim Asir Lailam. And Reuben's wife is forbidden. She cannot receive a Chalitza because he's a Cherish, nor can he marry her because it's a sister of his ex wife. Now, here they're both a Cherish, a Cherish. So let them remain married. Neither of them have an Easter because they're both treated like a cotton. So therefore, let them stay married according to Abdos. We don't care. He might just need to be get. Amr Shmaya Shmaya said, You know, I hear we, we don't let them stay together. Gzeda, we are worried. People see that Shimon continues living with his wife. What are they going to think? They're going to think, Ah, because they're a Cheresh and Cheresh, he doesn't really have to marry his sister in law. That Ruba's wife is free to go and marry anybody she wants. They don't understand the whole pupil over here that she's sort of stuck in limbo. They think that the reason is because Shimon and his wife are, are married and therefore she is free to go. That's what they would think. That's why we don't allow, we have to be forced them to get divorced and she is stuck. Says the Gemara, new pay the Kadno Cheresh. Now we're going back to the situation where we a long, long time ago that her husband died, and we don't we only know through a single witness. And we learned before that a single witness comes back and tells her that her husband's dead, and then she goes ahead and married, and all kinds of difficulties happen. Why do we allow it to marry in the first place? Because we guni kulabarabon. And why do we allow that? We had a machlekes. Is it because Isha Dayekis? Who means well, she'll do her own homework, knowing the consequences that she get it wrong. So if she relies on the witness definitely saying the truth, uh, or is it because a, a single witness in the case is not really testimony because it's a mils David You know, one day the husband can come back. So obviously the witness is going to tell the truth. Now we can learn a, a concept, and this is the rest of the Gemara. What about how do we ascertain if somebody passed away? What about in the case where we think that could be only imaginary, that you think probably. But it's not 100 percent a fact. For example, during during war, if you see um, if you see somebody lying there on the ground, you automatically think the person is dead, but not necessarily so. And therefore, you come in and testify, "Yeah, I saw there's a war and the guy was shot." That is not going to be accepted as testimony because how do you know the person died? So it's much like this: I'm a woman who went overseas. Shalom First of all, there was peace at home, so there's no reason to suspect that she's coming back and fabricating the stories. Number one, number two, is Shalom Ba'Elam. There's no wars going on there at, at all. So there's no reason to, to assume that she wasn't there. At, if a person died, he wasn't there at his deathbed. She comes along and says, May Bailey, my husband died. Tell us it. She can get married. We trust her. Forget about Aiden. We don't even need Aiden. We trust her because you know the consequences if she's lying. And, and she said, It's probably telling the truth. Why would she put her, her life in the, in the, you know, on the line? We trust her and we assume that she stayed with him until. You know, is ascertained that he was dead. What about Meg Bailey? He's saying this is the other. But she said my husband died, and she's childless. She can go ahead and marry her brother-in-law. What about Shalom Bein Noi Lebeino? There was peace, Shalom Bais at home, but Muhammad Ba'ilu. There was a war raging in the area where they went. Or Tata Bein Noi Lebeino. Oh, there was a lot of um, discord in their personal relationships. The Shalom Ba'ilu, but there's peace in the world. She comes back. My husband is dead. We cannot trust him. Because maybe not that we think that she's lying, but we think that she, as soon as she 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 she's so wish like wishful thinking that her husband died, that she'll say yet yeah, it looked like he died. That's enough. Well, boss, I'm not believing because we're saying that maybe she imagined it. Rabbi says, Rabbi says they never believed unless it's if we if we see some some kind of emotions. Ellie came, boss, she has to come in crying. If her husband died, wouldn't she cry? Who big there crying and her clothes were ripped because she sat shiva, whatever. Omrua, they said no. Achazub, achazub, do not say. In both instances, they get married. You don't need them to go ahead and pretend or to come in, you know, all disheveled and unkept. Tazi Gemara. Tell me, Lord Shalom, may know there's peace at home. Why do you have to mention peace at home? You generally, there's peace at home. The Gemara says, you're right. But the next part of the mission won't address this situation where there's no Shalom bias, so therefore the contrast is where there is. Tell me, Shalom, Boilem. So the Gemara said also, Mishim, the Gemara said also, and why do we say Shalom Ba'ilam? You know, generally there is peace in the world, is because we want to contrast it where there's a war. Amar Zerovah, my time is Muhammad. Why Taka is it that during a, a time of war, we don't believe her? 
um, even she didn't see, she didn't stay with him to to make sure that he's dead because it's a time away. You don't just hang around. So, but um, she she saw something and she thinks, ah, probably he's dead already. Um, that's called bedudami. Bedudami. She imagines that this is what happened. She makes an assumption, probability, and that's a probability becomes a fact, and that's um, and that's why we don't accept it. Something that we would have thought. Who polit? Because she thinks herself. All these people are dying around. And 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 uh, what my husband's the only one who was spared? No, no way. He probably died as well. Im Tim if you want to say Kim the Shalom Bain Ah, you can argue there's peace between them. Not uh, she would wait at the Khazir. If, if there's if there's Shalom Bayes that she misses her husband, of course she wouldn't. Don't you think that just because there's a war out there, she's gonna lead to desert her husband? She probably hung around to make sure that you know either you can save him or not. No, zim in the machle begida ibaruchah. Sometimes an arrow hit him or a sword, the sabra or a spear, the sabra. She thinks about the mess. She assumes nobody can survive that, so she's not. And so time of war, so she's not going to hang around. And she was in her mind made up that he's dead already. So that's why, we, as testimony, we cannot accept it. Probability is not good enough. Not people who can get cured, they put band-aids on them with all kinds of salves on it, and and they can save somebody, even though he might have slipped into unconsciousness. People can survive. So what Rabbi Rabbi thought, the main thing to say, the oven. But when it comes to a famine, she comes and says, "My hunger, my husband died from hunger." Ain't another kachama. There, it's not a this, it's not a stress like mochama, and therefore she probably waited around and we could trust her. It's not, there's no imagination. The loyam Rabbi the dummy definitely she's not imagining things, so she must be saying the truth. You can rely on her. Hello, Rabbi, the oven. Later on, he said, "No, hunger is just like war." People imagine things. He doesn't come in. Rabbi, somebody came for Rabbi. Um, the lady badly messed up. She said, "My husband died from famine, from hunger." So he wants to test her. Amalah, so he said to her the following, he just wanted to tease her out from her and to see, you know, to what extent she stayed there to see her husband actually died. Uh, he said to her, Shapir of Alata. Well, you know, he said to her, you know, it's good what you did, the she's with Nafshad that you saved yourself. Um, Salkadata, do you think who put it in the feast of the lube of the flower, the shafkila you left for him, have a chaik to survive? No, of course he couldn't survive. It's a good thing you left just in time to feed yourself. In other words, you didn't see him die. In fact, you left him a little bit of food, but you decided that that little bit of food, you can't live. Isn't that what happened? Um, Leymar. So now my yoda, she, she says, wow, exactly what I was thinking. You can't live. So then obviously, see, aha, so you coming in to testify that he's dead, you're thinking that probably he's dead. That's not called testimony. Then Rabbi went in a step further. That famine is even worse than war. By war, if he says, if she says by war, my husband died during the war. Okay, not believe because we think that we're assuming probably he's dead. During war, he, she says, but he was home, he was sick, and he died in his bed. Then we'll not believe him because it doesn't matter if the war were out there, but you were there at home and bed, and, and uh, you saw he went and he died. We look at the oven. When it comes to famine, add the umra mess ukavartiv. Even if she says he's dead, doesn't mean anything because people can go unconscious because they haven't eaten for a while. It doesn't mean they cannot come back to consciousness and so on. So you, by hunger, you have to say not only that her husband died, but I was there at his levaya. <clears throat> um, uh, so therefore, because by hunger, she makes bigger, greater assumptions. Because by war, you could always say maybe he's managed to escape. But by hunger, in your mind, you see him lying there. He's not going anywhere. He's stuck, and he has on deed, and he's dying for sure. He's dead. No, so therefore you have to say kibarti. Anymore, I said my pilot if a building collapses. Unfortunately, just a few years ago was the, uh, the anniversary of that building collapse in Miami. So my pilot is a building collapsed, and you didn't see anybody who you know, didn't save the bodies up beneath it. It's like the Muhammad, you automatically assume that they're all dead. Who said that you can't save them a week later, even? She assumes probably there's no way you can get out of that. So probably he's dead. What happens? There's a plague of snakes and scorpions. Again, people, whenever we there's a, a, an opportunity that people can make assumptions, then we have to really tease out of them to make sure that they actually saw the person die. <clears throat> Not just assuming the person's dead. What about a plague? Amula, some say it's like a war that people say, well, there's a plague, probably he's dead. Amula, others say, ain't it's not like a war. 
And I want that if there's a plague, you can assume that the person is dead. Amula, those who say it's like a Muhammad Madami, people imagine there's a terrible plague out there, a pandemic. Uh, if you don't see the person around, he's probably dead. But I'm others say any Muhammad. The Samchi Adamni Inchi, because she uh, he, he, may be make um that's right, it's not a Muhammad, because we rely on what people say, Shev Shnin have a Maisna, the Inish Bulay Shani Loy Azul. That people, the only people who are dying are people who are vulnerable and everything else, but people prematurely don't really die. So therefore. Uh, it's not like a war, and if she said that the person died, we trust that she actually saw the person die. Ibayil, who have an interesting question. What about We had no idea there was a war in that region where they went to. And she comes along and says, you know, where we went, there was a war, right? So she now cast a, a doubt on everything that she's about to say. And then she says, and but my husband died. Uh, my husband died. So what's the thing here? On the other hand, we she in a way incriminated herself by saying there's a war. Because remember, the moment there's a war, we start thinking that you're assuming things. And then she said, but I know my husband died. So she has a concept known as a migri. A migri, we learn all about in Baba Basra and, and, and Baba Tzir. A migri is when you could, if, if you're a liar, you could have said a greater lie. Why say this? You know, if I if you say, you know, you, you owe me money and I said, I paid you back. You believe me because I'm a migri. I could have said, what are you talking about? I never owed you the money. You have no evidence. So now that I said I paid you back, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm legitimizing your claim, but I paid you back, which is a less people then start thinking, so who, do, who should we believe? But if I said I never owed you, we have no idea who to believe. Over here also, if she wouldn't have said anything, she wouldn't have told us a war and just said my husband died, we believe it straight away. She's the one who said it's a war, but then she said my husband died. So it's a Migri versus a Chazak. Which one do we believe? Now the Gemara asked the same question about Bastard of Heaven Bays and in other places, but the Tracy already says and others, Others are shining about different levels of chazakas, different kinds of migas, so we can't compare one with another. Everyone is different. Also, another thing is, over there, the Deir Digmar talks about a person doesn't pay back within 30, um, within the time before the... Nobody pays their loans back before the due date. The chazaka, Reish Lakir says, ain't money. nobody pays back their loans before the due date. So what about if somebody comes along and says, uh, he, he, he tells us when the due date was, and but I paid back afterwards. Without his knowing, we would have thought... That um, I'm giving one example, the other example there. But out knowing, we would have thought that um, that you know the due date might have been later, or maybe there never was a, uh, a loan. The guy said there's a loan. He could have said there's no loan, but instead I said I paid you back, but before the due date. So there's a it's a meagly. You could have said I never borrowed the money in the first place, and uh, or you could have said I paid you back afterwards. Could have said I paid you back afterwards. Even if you have a star, could have said I paid you back afterwards, or I him. I could have said I paid you back afterwards. I mean, him. But instead, I paid you back and forth. So, Mar has a question. Do we say Migri? Over there, the Migri is contrary to Chazaka. Chazaka said you didn't pay. The Migri said you did pay. We got a problem. Which one should you believe? Over here, the Migri and the Chazaka don't contradict. Chazaka said there's a war in the world. So, we assume people make assumptions. But she's saying, I know that my husband died. So, in, 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 and, and, and so the question is, or she's saying that even if it's a, it, it's not a question of lying here, it's a question of what she believes. And therefore, it's, it's the Migi and the Chazaka are not really contradicted to each other. So what do we do in this case? So Why should she lie? She could have said, there's peace in the world, and then we will believe no question about it. Or perhaps, of course, she came along and she said, there's a war. I'm going to be the dummy. So we say, at the moment, she tells us the war, we're going we're gonna to believe it. Whatever you can tell us now is only what you think. And therefore, the Miga cannot come along and override the Chazak. So, which one is it? Toshma <clears throat> coming here. Ishinu Aleinu Bayis. Let's say she comes along and she says that there's a fire and full of smoke in our house. But I, would, I managed to flee, flee, but my husband stayed behind. Or Ishinu in the cave. They smoked us out. Um, who made when he that he died and I, was, and I somehow or another managed to survive? Ain't in the menace, she's not believed. Now, look, here you have a she's the one who told us there was a problem, and then, and then she told us how she got out of it. And and yet, we believe <coughs> we say she's not believed, so we see that the Migu cannot go to Chazak without her. And she just came and said, My husband died, we believe her. But now that she said that they were smoked out and everything else, so we're saying now she probably imagined it. So we see that Migu is not against, does not believe against Chazak anymore. No, shiny husband is different, she herself has proven. That she was able to save herself. So how do we know that her husband was able to save herself as well? Went out a different direction. Shani husband Amrullah, she we tell her, she said, just like miraculous, they usually able to, to survive. Why can't it be that you also managed to survive? Just a little bit, a little bit further. Touch my coming here. Nuffle later, we were attacked by Goy, Nuffle later, at least we were attacked by a bunch of bandits. Who mess? He died, Vinit Salti, and I would manage to save myself. 
the managers believe. So we see that the Migli is stronger than the, the Chazaka. Once you, you, there's, a, there's like a war, and yet we believe. We believe it. So there's different. There's different. You know why I believe her? Because men, the, the, the bandits don't want. They just kill them. Women, they want to keep for themselves alive. So therefore, uh, she was able to survive, but you can't use the same logic and say, oh, what, where, maybe your husband survived. No, the husband probably killed, so we believe it. Uh, the, the, the person of the the at the end of the wedding, Hitler noyde began, and suddenly the whole chup and everything else with the reception was caught on fire. Omla de Visu, his wife said, Chazu Gavroi, Chazu Gavroi. The wife said, look at that person over there. Look at them, this guy's wife. The husband's out there somewhere. Says to a few people around her, look, Look, the man is standing in the fire. The man is in the fire. It's my husband. Also, Chazu Gavra, they came, they all came running over to try to save him. They saw Gavra Haruka completely burnt. The Shadi was lying there. Who peace for the day, the Shadi. I also saw a hand next to it, all burnt and charred and everything else lying right next to it. Um, um, what do you call it? <clears throat> so we think, well, it's the same thing. Your husband might have escaped. This might be somebody else. And therefore, um, just like you somehow or another survived the wedding fire, so to her husband. Um, but Robert says, no, in this case, we actually assume it is the husband. Me dummy. Over there, we didn't see anybody die. But, um, over here, she said, look, there's my husband, there's my husband burning, and people just saw it. Number one. There's, there's a body lying there. A piece of the other, and there's a hand there that somebody else probably tried to save him. It was lying there. So that's very different. He says, maybe He says, no. How do you know it's a husband? Maybe it was another person. Maybe the husband did not just escape. And maybe it was another person who tried to save him who got burnt over there. The other, the Shadia, the Italia, um, and so maybe maybe it's another person. I know he says, even that is not definitive of her husband, even though she saw a person and right where the husband was standing and burning everything else, and she assumes her husband still an assumption because maybe her husband managed to flee. This is somebody else who tried to save her husband from the fire who died. Um, maybe it's another person. I know he says, even that is not definitive of her husband, even though she saw a person and right where the husband was standing and burning everything else, and she assumes her husband still an assumption because maybe her husband managed to flee. This is somebody else who tried to save her husband from the fire who died. I so where's the husband? Where in the world is the husband? If he managed to flee, he just got married. Where why is he coming back? Because we see Alabi Muma, maybe some kind he got partially burnt and he looks and his face got burnt and he looked terrible. Well, Mahmas Kisufi, he's so embarrassed, his new look. Also, Bodak Lama, he fled. He was embarrassed to go back to his wife the way he knew his new look, and therefore he fled. So we have no proof one way or another. Okay, so we haven't resolved that question. We'll stop.